Welcome to another episode of the Automation Lab. We're your hosts, Andy and Grace. From one meter social distancing to separate houses now. Due to the recent measures of COVID-19, we have decided to film this episode separately. Andy will bring you through the concept of automation, while I will join you guys later for the activity. Now this web series is called The Automation Lab. So where better to start than with an introduction on automation? Basically, automation is any technology that allows for automatic control without the need for a human to continuously control any process or machine. For example, look at the modern factory and compare it to the factories of 100 years ago. But previously dangerous work sites like processors harmful chemicals put workers in danger to exposure as they had to monitor readings up close. Now with automation, workers can do the monitoring remotely a safe distance from any hazards. A frequent comparison made to automation is the human body, where each component is compared to a bodily function. First off, motion. Motion related devices such as motors are the equivalent of your arms and legs, moving items or even the whole body over distances. This can be most obviously seen in robotic arms in production. Then there's a few devices, which are like the various sensors of your body. Devices such as temperature and humidity sensors, as well as barcode readers and functions similar to one's sense of sight and touch. You've also got a myriad of different industrial communication protocols, which are like the different languages of the world, and sometimes even different ways of self-expression in general. Just like how it's sometimes easier to draw a diagram instead of explaining a problem verbally, certain protocols like backhand have advantages over a different one such as more CCP. Finally, we have got the literal brains of the operation, the Programmable Logic Controller, or PLC. This contains the logic of the process and links the previous components together. Want your motor to move when your temperature sensors reach high temperature? This can be done in the PLC program. Enough of the analogies though. What can we do with all these technologies? Now, besides making dangerous industrial processes much safer, we can also ensure products are manufactured with maximum efficiency. This is particularly important at this time, as we see production of masks being ramped up to meet the demands of healthcare workers and the general population alike. What about automation that's closer to the home? Lights can be turned on and off based on the schedule. Air conditioners can be regulated depending on ambient temperatures and you can even track who's and their left home. Of course, all this can be scaled much larger, with building management systems being frequently employed in shopping centres, for example. I hope you had a good time watching this introduction to automation. Now stay tuned, and Grace is up next for the activity. Thank you, Andy. I hope this has been a very useful session for you. Now, it is time for our activity. With cleaning being such a popular activity now, our activity today will just be related to cleaning. Cleaning of our very own IPC I've managed to engage our service specialist Austin to bring us through this activity.
We will start off with cleaning a C6920. First and most importantly, switch off the controller. Switch off meaning shut down, power off and remove the plug. Secondly, open the metal lid at the side using the catch at the top and bottom of the IPC. Using a clean cloth, you can add a little bit of hand sanitizer with alcohol to clean the metal and plastic parts of the IPC. Just take note to avoid the pins, the power supply, as well as the Ethernet ports. Continue to clean the left side of the IPC. The right side of the IPC. And don't forget the base as well. You can also clean the vents, but ensure no liquid enters it. After you're done, put the hard disk back and close the lid. Ensure that the hard disk is in the correct position. And just like that, you are done. Speak and span free of viruses. The next product we will be cleaning is the CX51000 series, our embedded PC. Likewise, using a dry cloth with a few drops of hand sanitizer, clean the back of the lid and try to prevent any liquid from seeping through it. Close the lid and continue to clean the top, avoiding the ethernet pots and pins. As you clean the side of the CX, remember to avoid the pins. This is important because the metal pins are for electrical conduction. Put the CFAS card and battery back into their original positions and close the lid. And once again, a simple job well done. The last item we will be cleaning is our control panel. Before we start, remember to use a bubble wrap or a clean cloth to ensure the screen is not scratched. Flip to the back of the control panel. Using a screwdriver, unscrew the screw at the bottom of the control panel to check if there is any battery and CFAS card inside. In this case, it is empty. If there is, please remove them. Next, add hand sanitizer to a cloth and clean the base. Next, clean the sides of the control panel. Ensure the edges of the base are cleaned as well. Likewise, avoiding the ethernet ports and pins at the bottom of the control panel.
And with that, we have come to the end of our activity, cleaning of IPC. I hope that you learned something new. Automation Lab for another round of safety and I.O. lessons which will be beneficial for you. Till then, stay safe. Don't forget to like and share our Facebook page to your friends and colleagues. And remember your mask. See you soon.